guys welcome to my Etsy channel where the main objective is to help you build a thriving Etsy business and welcome to an episode of Etsy shop critique today I'll be doing a critique on the store called Xena Turk I apologize if I'm saying it wrong by owner Joe Bird so thank you Joe for reaching out and allowing me to do a audit on your store so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing that I normally talk about on a critique is the product photography so I picked this listing right here to do an audit on so my first suggestion for product photography is that your photo has to be amazing um, it has to be compelling it has to tell like a storytelling the person has to feel like you're going to have two potential customers, right? The one that was actually looking for a greeting card and the one that wasn't looking for a greeting card. So you want the person that was looking for the greeting card to say, wow, this is beautiful. I want it. Click on it. Bye. And then you want the one that wasn't looking for it, maybe stumble by mistake on your shop or whatever happened. They found you. But they're like, wow, I didn't, I did, I don't need this, but I want this. So you want it um, market to both type of buyers. The first thing I would suggest is maybe using um, going to creative market. Any resources I talk about, they're all linked below on this video. So I would recommend going to creative market and buying Maka products. So if you go to creative market, um, you could buy a Maka that is going to elevate your photo way better. It's going to make it look so much better. And with Creative Market, they have so many things that you could buy. Um, so let's say you do card mockup and you just like search. You're going to find so many things. Oh, let's put on greeting card because now it's reading any type of card. Greeting card mockup. So if you can see that, you see how many they have? And it's going to elevate the way that you present your photo. What I recommend is that it's getting something that has a nice clear background that's going to showcase your product really, really well. Um, even this one is nice. It's like someone holding the greeting card with their hand. Um, this one's nice because it has like the envelope, almost like what you have. But the photo is a little nicer. This one's nice. If you're selling Christmas cards, this would be a nice mock-up for Christmas cards, though. You don't want to put just any card there. This is another. It's like a mock-up of the card closed, the card open, slightly open, the back side of the card. So this way you can showcase your card in every every different angle. It doesn't cost that much, but it will elevate your photo to another level. It's going to make your photo look more appealing to the buyer, and it's going to look nicer. You see how this photo looks really, really nice, especially for like Christmas, if you have a Christmas card. It just takes it to another level. So you definitely want to work on how your photo looks. Right now it looks okay. But can it look better? Yes, it could look amazing. So therefore, I recommend spending a little bit of money on buying mock-ups, but using that. And I also recommend showing the car in different angles um, and then also having a cohesive look. So every photo should be the, the same background color, just like showing it in different angles. I will also add a call to action. So having a photo that says, you know, favor this item, or click below to read more, click below to learn more about the, the product. The reason why is because you want to keep them longer in your store. And you have to tell people what to do. A lot of people, is their first time visiting on XC. They don't know that they could click right um, below and they could read the listing description and they could learn more. A lot of people don't even know that. So you have to pretend that the people that you are marketing to, they don't know anything about XC, so you kind of have to guide them on how to look at your items and how to find your products and your services. So I will definitely change the photo because right now the photo is okay, but if you change it and you add a one of those mock-ups, it's going to take it to another level and, ho and hopefully also increase your sales. So keep in mind, lastly, about the photo, a bad photo could prevent you from getting a sale. When you are selling online, all you have is your photo. Photos are, because it's not like when you go to a store 
that you could actually wear the product, feel the product, touch the texture. You could kind of see how it looks in person. So online, all they have is the photo. So the photo has to be very clear, has to be very transparent. The person has to really know what they're buying. Um, they have to like want to buy the product just because it's so beautiful. So that's why you definitely want to work on your, your product photography to make, to take it to another level. The second thing I normally talk about is, um, SEO. So as you might know, is search engine optimization. It's basically optimizing your page for the search engine and search engine is anywhere from XC search engine to Yahoo to Bing to, um, any large, um, Google, obviously Google. So any search engine out there and you want to make sure that you meet all the factors um, to rank. So is are you using the keyword in your title? Are you using the keyword in your listing description? Are you using the additional keywords throughout your listing description? Do you have a photo? Do you have a, a compelling meta description? So, um, how old is your listing? How many people like your listing? So there's a lot of factors that play on whether your your actual listing will appear on page one or page two or three or or bury somewhere in the bottom of of the Google search results, right? Or the Etsy search results. Um, one thing I noticed is that you only have one keyword here. I highly recommend, that's fine if you wanna just use one keyword. As a matter of fact, Etsy uh, just changed their, their metrics on that and that's what they want. They want you to have like a short, compelling keyword. So in that sense, it's great. Um, what I would recommend is that you write the keyword, that's fine, but then also write a short, compelling description of what you're selling. Uh, right now, it's too, it, it, it's not enough information. So you definitely have to work on writing a captivating title. Right now, it's not captivating enough for someone to want to buy. It looks like the person that owns the store really doesn't apply themselves to, you know, looking at the little details like that. So just make sure that you don't overlook stuff like that. Um, only because it's going to make you stand out. Another thing I saw is that majority of your keywords are, are oversaturated, meaning that too many people are using. So therefore it's going to be very, very hard for you to rank for. Um, so I definitely suggest, um, using keywords that you're going to rank for organically. And also if you were to run an ad, you won't have to pay so much money for running that particular ad. Um, keep in mind that this listing you put that is, is Christmas or festive winter, different sparkle feathers, right? These are two generic keywords. They're too broad. Feathers could be anything, right? So if you were to go to xc.com and you were to type in the word feather, everything and anything will come up that has a feather in it. So therefore, you're not targeting your audience. You're just targeting anybody. So you might see in your metrics, right, that you get a lot of impressions or a lot of views for certain keywords, but you're not getting the sales. That's because you're driving the wrong people to your store. You're targeting anybody and everybody, but you're not targeting the people that are actually interested in buying your product because you're just using keywords that are too broad. So the word feather, as you can see, it could be these little feather stained glass that you put in the in your in in glass or you could be feathers actual feathers right of course and they have feather prints and they have all type of things they even have a feather mohawk so therefore now you're just targeting anybody so you definitely want to do your keywords again you one you don't want to use keywords that are oversaturated because you're not going to be found organically and then on top of that um the keywords if you were to run, let's say, a Facebook, uh, an Etsy ad, your your ad is going to be on the bottom end of Etsy. You're not going to be in the first page of Etsy. And if you are, you're going to pay an arm and a leg because the cost per bid is going to be a lot higher. So therefore, you definitely need to change your keyword. Sparkle is too broad. Different is too broad. Winter is too broad. Festive is too broad. Unique is too broad. You see, these are more targeted. These are not. So all of these have to go. I honestly think these three have to go as well. Because what you're selling, in my opinion, season's greeting, I think that's more festive. So I kind of see where you're going with that. However, 
I will focus more on like feather greeting card because that's more accurate to what you're selling just to see what pops up and then kind of play with that. So you could use Etsy rank, which is the tool that I'm using right now to research keywords. And all you have to do is um, come up here and just type in what you're selling. Don't try to get fancy and say winter and, and that's too broad. So just look at what you're selling and type it in. So yours will be more, in my opinion, like feather greeting card is more appropriate. So I will search it that way and kind of go from there and kind of see what comes up and kind of keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that until you find those keywords that go with your actual product. As you can see, it's very broad. So for the postcard, but you're not selling a postcard, that would be a good one if you ever sell a postcard. So you kind of have to go through here, kind of go through them, kind of dissect what works, what doesn't work, um, and find keywords that describe your item. What I recommend is using long tail keywords, which is describing what you sell, um, but adding more keywords because if you use generic keywords like see like um, greeting card stuff like that, um, it's going to be really hard for you to rank for. So therefore, um, the chances of you being on page one of Etsy is going to be very very low. So I highly highly suggest to redo them again um, because right now all the keywords are not working for your favor. They're too broad and they're too oversaturated and you're not targeting your audience. So definitely we'll work on that. Another thing is whenever you're using keywords, you want to use all 13. The reason why you want to use all 13 is because the more keywords you use, the mo more exposure you get to your listings, the more people will see your listings. If you're using nine, you're actually losing traffic from potential keywords that you could have ranked for. So before you add new products or you add anything else, um, you should always work on that one particular item. Make sure that is is optimized fully. Is you have all the keywords, you have everything, and then move on to the next one. But definitely work on adding uh, more keywords. Work on adding more photos. And the last, the other thing I wanted to talk about is your listing description, right? So the listing description, as you know already, is what it sounds like listing description it describes what you sell and you should include everything and anything the potential buyer should know about that particular item that you're selling so it should include the size um, the shipping policy if you have any if it's a digital download um, how to order um, everything uh, what I would do is um, put this into sections because right now like you have one sentence here then you got these here then you got one sentence here, one. So it's kind of hard to understand what's happening. Divide it into sections. This is kind of what I have in mind. And this is just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm saying. You don't have to do it how I have it. But basically, you know, have description, what you're buying, what's included, returns and refund, etc., etc. So you could have one that says shipping. You could have one what's included. And then that's where you put card and envelope. And then you could have um, and then also know what's included. You can have the size of it and the paper and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but just making it easy to read. So when somebody's browsing, they know exactly where to go. If they want to just read the shipping, they know shipping is down here. Um, and it also helps build one credibility. It makes it easier for the buyer. And another thing you got to um, keep in mind is that first 160 characters is called the meta description. That's what someone sees when they find your search they find your listing on Google and this is like a preview right here. So you want to make sure that your first 160 characters are very compelling. Not only does it include the keyword like you have it, but also includes a, a captivating caption that the person's going to see and be like, Oh, I'm, I'm curious to know what type of seasonal feather this is. Let me click on it. Right. They're curious to know. And keep in mind that from this description here, if, you, if I was to read this, I, I, I don't know that this is a greeting card because look at what it says. Seasonal feather, right? Seasonal feather, single colorful feather to brighten up the dark winter days. This is taken from an original Joel Berg printed on. So I don't know what I'm buying, right? It looks like I'm buying a feather, right? So you definitely want to include in there that this is a greeting card, but you want to write a captivating caption. This one's going to be intrigued to click on it, to buy from you. But if they don't know what they're buying or they click on it, right? 
but it's not what they thought they were buying, they're not going to buy it. So you're going to have either no clicks or you're going to have some clicks because they thought they were buying an actual feather. But when they clicked, they, they found out that this is a greeting card store. So they're going to leave. And that's why a lot of people see either a lot of impressions or they get a lot of clicks, but they don't get sales because um, it's not really describing the item. Um, so therefore the person gets confused and they leave. So working on your listing description, I would definitely work on it. Writing a captive, like I said earlier, writing a captivating description of what you're selling, separating into sections to read, making sure you're very clear, making sure that you take the time to write a very well written listing description that describes everything and anything the customer should know about what they're buying. That way there's no confusion. And it's easy for them to go ahead and make a decision and say, okay, I'm interested and I want to go ahead and buy. So that's my suggestion for that. Now, the last thing that I talk about is the curation of your shop. And it's like the overall look of your shop and um, branding and cohesiveness, etc. So I do like the fact that you have um, a, a logo. So that's good. The photo, I would change it to a human, like someone, like your face or, or well, yeah, your face because you're the owner. The reason why is because people want to know who they're buying from. It looks more professional, right? So you want to um, take your Etsy shop to the next level. You have to treat it as a real business and you have to stand out. So you have to put a picture. You have to make sure that it looks good. Um, I highly, highly recommend doing that because... It does make you stand out from other people and it's going to um, take your store to an another level. So you definitely want to do that. I like that you have um, your tagline. I will remove this because people know that you're in the UK. It's already here. So you don't need to have it twice. Um, let's see what else. Your banner is not bad, but you could do way better because... If you look at the most prominent shops out there, they have amazing banners. Like they have a banner, they have social media links, they have their hours of operation, they have their website. So you definitely want to work on creating a banner that stands out, that makes your store look better than all the other greeting sh shops out there, right? You want to separate yourself from the competition. So therefore your store has to look better. It has to be appealing. It has to be cohesiveness. So you see how... All of these photos look cohesive because they have the same style. That's being cohesive. So you have that down pack. However, this this journal here or the calendar, I apologize. The calendar doesn't look like it goes with this with this photo here. So if I was browsing Etsy and I saw this, I want to be able to remember, oh, that's um that store. They have the same look and the same style. And that's creating a brand. So right now you have one with red and one with green and even this one is like a different shade of green so you want to keep it all cohesive almost like the same style the same background the same colors and that's going to help you um stand out and it's also going to help you give your your store a, a cohesive branding look another thing i would do is crop your photos in a complementary way so if you have any photos that like this one is like a little bit cut off I will work on working on how not to get it cut off because you want to make sure that you showcase your item. Um, first impressions are everything. And keep in mind that the photo is everything. You could have an amazing product, but because you had a bad photo, you will not make the sale. So if you want to increase your sale, you want to work on not only your SEO aspect, not only having a cohesive look, but you also want to look at the whole overall overall store the curation of your store and if you need to hire someone to do your photos or you need to hire someone to kind of revamp the way your store looks or or hire a graphic designer to do your banner do that spend the money because you have to spend money to make money on xc or any type of business you do out there it's just one of those things that you have to uh, spend money to make money so make sure that you work on that because ultimately by doing all that, it's going to make you stand out and it's going to give you um, the look and style that you want and increase your sales as well. So these are my suggestions for your store. Um, guys, if you have any tips for Joe that I didn't mention, make sure that you leave a comment below. Make sure that 
um, you leave a, you know, a nice comment about what needs to be improved. I'm trying to create a sense of community where we all come together and help each other. So make sure you leave a comment below. Well, thank you guys for watching and thank you for this review, Joe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.